this hour and season, there is a lot happening. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But I assure you today, you're going to feel firm in Christ Jesus. I'm Angela Madden, and I'm here with Jay Gilbert. Welcome to Unscripted Faith. Man, I am so excited. We got a whole lot to get into, y'all. We're going to head over to the set. Listen, we've got a, uh, the debates coming up tonight. Yes. Uh, which is just completely outstanding. Uh, and we've got a phenomenal, phenomenal guest. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn is with us. And I'll tell you what, every time I've had the privilege of interviewing him, it has been outstanding. There's, God has blessed him with so many cool revelations that just come out. And I mean, I can't wait to get in on what is he's going to share today. Oh, I can't either, especially in this day and age. We need all the mysteries revealed. We need <laughs> understanding in this hour. I'm excited for this interview. And what's really great is God has given us a great voice that has the ability to speak these mysteries and revelations so we know the times and the seasons that we're in. And that's what Jonathan Kahn is. He is truly a man that is a son of Issachar. He discerns the signs of the times and he knows what Israel ought to do. So I don't know if you know this or not, but he was named along with Billy Graham as one of the top spiritual leaders of the last 40 years to have radically impacted our, our world. He's known for uncovering ancient mysteries in the biblical text while bringing forth messages of prophetic importance. He joins us right now on Unscripted Faith to provide his take on the significance of the events unfolding in our world today. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, always a pleasure to have you here. Great to be back, always. Hey, now let's get right into it because listen, I'm excited about the debates and stuff that are coming up. I mean, this is the first one. And I know this doesn't have everything to do with your book, but I know some things in the book. I want to get your take. What are you seeing happening and what's coming up here tonight? Well, we got to pray uh, because, you know, America <laughs> is in the balance and the two candidates, two parties are very much a, uh, a very distinct. Um, there is a very radical agenda on one side. Um, and there, you know, and on one hand, you know, if, I think if, if one wins, it's going to accelerate America falling away from God. If the other, it'll slow it down, you know, but we have to pray, you know, so we have to pray for God's will totally. And, sa and the other thing is we have to pray for revival because regardless of who's there, I mean, that makes a difference, but, and it will make a difference. We all should vote, vote, register, yes. vote, but we need to pray for revival because without revival, America is lost. Amen. The dragon's prophecy. Let's jump into the book here. What's different about this book from the others that you've written? Well, The Dragon's Prophecy is uh, the only book I've written that actually opens up the, the dimension of the of end time prophecy and how it's actually things are happening right now. It's the mysteries of what's happening now, which you find in, in, like I've written in my books um, and revealing it, but it's, it's connecting to ancient prophecies, ancient mysteries, ancient entities that are behind everything. It's the only book where I'm, I mean, God interrupted me and said, this is the one you have to write. And when I started writing it, actually what I was writing was coming, started coming true in the world. And I had to keep on rewriting it because it kept on happening. And even after I finished it, it kept on happening. So it's really, it's, it, it's, um, I've never quite written a book like this. And also the groundswell for this book is, has never been something that we've ever experienced on this. So I know it's for now. And it's not only what's happening, what's coming. Um, this may enable us to know what's coming and also, but how to be prepared for each of us because we're all in it. Well, it's been so prophetic. Something happened the night before October 7th, why are you revealing one of the mysteries? Tell us a little bit about what happened on that night. Yeah, I was led in Beth Israel, the congregation I lead in New Jersey, and I was led that night to share a particular biblical mystery um, that actually the mystery ordained that there would be an attack on Israel, would happen, take Israel by surprise, would lead to war, would happen in the month, well, actually the year of 2023, the month of October, would happen on a Saturday, the Sabbath, would happen on a Hebrew holy day, from Leviticus, what happened on the first Saturday of October of 2023. I shared it Friday night. It was October 6th. The next morning, it happened. So this is one of, this is one of the mysteries that led to the dragon's prophecy. And, it, and the thing is, it may, it's one of the mysteries in the book that may enable us to even know events that are going to happen and when, how to be ready. And again, since I finished the book, other things from this mystery uh, came true according to the mystery. So God's in charge. Wow. Now tell us about the 50 year jubilee uh, that happened in regards to 1973 and how everything happened in October of 2023 and what took place. 
Yeah, there's a mystery in the Bible that is that is the the jubilee, and that is the fiftieth year. The fiftieth year, you know, there's good. If you lost your land, you get it back, and, and all that. But the thing is that actually, and on top of it, we can't, we won't be able to get into it. But the, God had actually resurrected Israel according to the jubilee, according to the fifty-year mystery. Wow. It's amazing, wow. but He did it. But the enemy, who is the dragon of the book in the prophecy of the Bible. Uh, he imitates the, the works of God, and he twists it. Instead of being something that's good for Israel and the Jewish people, it turns around against it. So there was actually a calamity that happened. 1973, it was the Yom Kippur War. Surprise invasion, almost destroyed Israel. Almost, and, and by a miracle, they turned it around. But it has shaken Israel up to this day. It was the worst calamity they ever had up until October 7th. The thing is, so what happened? What happened was it was attacked in 1973, surprise invasion, happened, happened. Well, let's just take it this way. If you go 50 years, what's the jubilee of this calamity? The jubilee would take you, would pinpoint the year 2023. When did the Yom Kippur happen? In October. So it's pinpointing October of 2023, there's going to be an invasion. The Yom Kippur War happened on Saturday. The invasion happened. So this next invasion is going to happen on Saturday, on the Sabbath. Going to catch Israel by surprise. It's going to happen. The Yom Kippur invasion happened on a Hebrew holy day from the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. So October 7th invasion happened on a Hebrew holy day from Leviticus, same chapter 23. The Yom Kippur war happened the first Saturday of October of 1973. So it's pinpointing, watch out, the first Saturday of October of 2023. It's all going to happen. And so it did. Wow. You know, when you think about Jubilee, the debts are canceled, slaves go free, uh, everything goes back to the rightful owner. Is there any spiritual significance? Is there something that God's getting ready to do with or in Israel? Or does that mean something for the body of Christ? Well, the, the, the thing is, you know, there, God has done something according to a Jubilee and cycle. I won't be able to get into the detail, but 1867 was one of those years. You count 50 years. 1917, Israel is given the land. Uh, they never got Jerusalem, but go to the next Jubilee. is 1967, Six-Day War. They get Jerusalem in that. They never got the legal right to it, legal recognition. The world refused. Count 50 years, takes it to 2017 when President Trump issues the Jerusalem wow. Declaration. Wow. First time wow. since ancient times. So it's happening anyway. There's even, you know, there's even a countdown. We can't go into it, but in the book, where if you count from these jubilees and even the Six-Day War, Yom Kippur War, it, the, the days, thousands of days, will pinpoint the exact Saturday when this was to happen. Wow. And when Hamas invaded, we know the name Hamas is in the scriptures, am I right? Where yes. do we find that? Yes. What's the mystery? Yeah, Hamas is, a, is an Arabic word. It means Islamic resistance and also means zeal, but it's also a Hebrew word at the same time. In Hebrew, though, it means de evil, death, and destruction. It actually appears in the Bible. In the Bible from the Hebrew, it says, Lord, save me from the man of Hamas. It says Hamas has risen up as a rod of evil in the land. It says that, you know how Hamas hides in the tunnels? It says Hamas dwells in the dark places of the earth. Wow. And it says wow. to Israel in, the, in Isaiah, rid Hamas from the land. And when it says when, in, when Messiah will rule, or actually Ezekiel, in, a, in Isaiah, it says when Messiah will rule, it says one of the blessings is, Israel, no more in your land shall be heard Hamas. Wow. Well, listen, I've got more that I want you to get into on the word Hamas in the book of Revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stay tuned. We're going to go in deeper in his book, The Dragon's Prophecy. You're not going to want to miss it. Let somebody else know as well. Tell them to tune in. He's breaking apart Revelation. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, Request your 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through Scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. The 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the lost through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. 
To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. A place of rest, a beacon of truth, your source of encouragement and entertainment. Welcome home. Well, if you're just joining us, you have come at a good time because we are yeah. having a powerful conversation with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And Rabbi, we want to continue this conversation and ask you about Hamas. How is it connected to the book of Revelation? Well, you know, in the book of Revelation, it speaks about the dragon, which it says is the a symbol of the enemy. And it speaks about a woman with 12 stars who gives birth to the Messiah, which is Israel. And the dragon is warring against the woman. And the dragon, it says, that spews a flood out of his mouth to wipe the woman away, a flood. Well, people don't realize that what happened on October 7th, Hamas actually had a code name for it. They have a name for it. They called it Operation Tufan. Tufan is Arabic. It means the flood, as in the flood of the dragon. Mm. Wow. You know, you are in your book, The Dragon's Prophecy, talk about Adolf Hitler as well. I know a lot of people like to know about that. Tell us about that part of the mystery. Yeah, there's so much. And of course, we could just give a taste, but but to the book. But the thing is that, yeah, people don't realize this. He actually had a part in it. Uh, the thing is, you know, there's a guy, there was a man named the Mufti. Um, uh, he's an Arabic man who hated the Jewish people. He ended up, he was responsible for bloodshed. He ended up going to Berlin, had a meeting with Adolf Hitler. They, he, he worked with Hitler. He wanted to bring the Holocaust to Israel. He, he broadcast from Radio Berlin telling the Arabs to kill the Jews, and he infected them with, with Nazi ideology. He ended up coming back to the Middle East. He is called the father of Palestinian nationalism. He worked for Adolf Hitler, and this is and the, and the thing is, he he came into contact with a, a an Egyptian teenager, and he discipled him, trained him, uh, mentored him. The teenager's name was Yasser Arafat, who wow. became the head of all this. And the other thing is that Adolf Hitler actually sponsored a. Uh, an organization in the 1930s, he funded them, you know, you know, gave them the money they needed, trained them, all this stuff, worked with them. They're called the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood gave birth to Hamas. So Hamas wow. was actually, and their charter actually is taken from the words of Adolf Hitler. And, and here's one other thing, just throwing this in. You know, Hitler appointed a man to be in charge of the Holocaust. His name was Heinrich Himmler. He appointed Himmler over the, you know, the areas to start the Holocaust. The date he appointed him for the Holocaust was October 7th. The day that, that Himmler was born was October 7th. So here is October 7th. Now, Rabbi, hold up a minute, hold up a minute. <laughs> this is just like outstanding. How, how do you come up with this stuff? I just got to ask that because I'm like, you know, you can study for years and never see this. You see Adolf Hitler and all this stuff and how it relates to what's happening. How do you get this stuff? Well, the Lord, you know, you know, <laughs> the Lord leads, puts on my heart, wow. puts in my mind. Um, I and then and then sometimes I'm in my bed and it just comes to me, and then I wow. check it out and it's real. Um, wow. Or sometimes people say something, something happens that ends up being the key to the next thing that I need for this mystery. So I could never reproduce it. You know, from starting from the harbinger, I was standing at ground zero. That's when yeah. it started. Um, I can't re I could never reproduce any of the books. It just happens. You know, I and God does it. Wow. It's powerful. And I'm always reminded of that scripture. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter yes, yes. and the glory of kings to uncover it. What a powerful king, a child of God. But I have a question. So are we really living in the end days? Like, is this where we are? What are the colors of the apocalypse? 
Yeah, this is a, yeah, this, it's like things accelerated. There was so much that has happened. And that's why you, the, the, the largest part of the, of the Dragon's Prophecy is the end of days. There's so much that happened that where prophecies were literally accelerating and we are crossing lines of biblical prophecy. Um, the Bible says in the last days, Israel is going to be back in the world. The world is going to focus on Israel. It's going to hate Israel, rage against it. Well, that's all happened. Not just October 7th, but what happened after it. All around the world. You know, this is all part of it leading to Armageddon ultimately. Well, you know, the, the, in the book of Revelation, it gives colors. It's of the apocalypse. It's, it was the four horsemen, the first, the white horse uh, of, con of conquest, the red horse of war, the, the black horse of famine, and the, the pale green horse of death. Well, the amazing thing is the, the colors of the apocalypse started appearing all over where the, wherever there was rage against Israel around the world, the colors appeared. It was the flag they were waving. It's the flag of Palestine. The flag of Palestine is white for the white horse, red for the red horse, black for the black horse, and green for the green horse, the colors of the apocalypse. And every nation that has those colors, their flag is the main colors, it marks them as an enemy of Israel. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now, I, I know you can't give a, an exact date. I'm not asking you to do this. <laughs> when you talk about the end of days, how close do you think we are to the return of Jesus Christ? Well, we're closer, <laughs> number one. Yeah. Um, and we are in the neighborhood, you know, because, you know, the, the first sign is Israel, you know, and, and then Jerusalem. And then another sign is apostasy, the great falling away. We yeah, see this we every see day. Yeah. You know, we are racing to these things. Um, then with what just happened in October 7th, one of the things I, I open up in the book is that these things are actually have a link to Ezekiel's prophecy yeah. about the great invasion in the end times that every nation that or, or most of the nations we can identify from Ezekiel had a part in the invasion of October 7th. Even Iran, there's a mystery, there's a whole mystery to Iran in all this, and it's all happening. So there, so we are certainly closer. We don't set dates, but we have to be ready. Wow. Talk to us in your book. This is probably a word that most people have never heard, including myself. I believe if I'm pronouncing it the right way, is it Sarparos? Yeah, Sarparos. That is, the Bible speaks about it. One of the things the book does is opens up entities as well as mysteries that are at work right now. The Bible speaks of an entity called the Sarparos. It says that this entity is, is a, it wars against Israel. It, and particularly against the purposes of God for Israel in the last days. Well, the word sarparas can be translated in Hebrew as the master, ruler, or general of Iran. Literally, Iran is, this is linked to Iran. And so it's no accident that Iran has become the most obsessed nation to destroy Israel. Anti, it was behind Hamas, behind Hezbollah. Behind, it's being driven by this entity. And the amazing thing is, you know, when you look at October 7th, you know, you have, you know, behind that was Gaza, behind Gaza was Hamas, behind Hamas was Iran, behind Iran was the Sar Paras, and behind the Sar Paras is the dragon. On the other side, the, the same, the Bible also reveals there's an entity protecting Israel. It's called the Sar Yisrael. We know him as Michael. So there's actually, when Iran sent all these missiles, you know, 99% of them were struck down. Well, you have, a, you have someone at work there. So there's a war, no accident why Israel and Iran, it's all what's happening in the heavenlies. Once you, you know, the, the book is to unveil, take away the veil. So when you see what's happening in the spiritual, you'll see why it's happening on earth. Now, we only got a couple of minutes left, Rabbi, but I want to know, is, is there some type of uh, correlation between the unexpected death of the Iranian president and the book that you're writing? Yeah, yeah this is the only president. His name was Ebrahim Raisi. President of Iran, the only president of Iran who actually struck Israel. The Bible says you strike Israel, you're in trouble. You know, it says there's a covenant. Whatever you do, you bless Israel, curse Israel, it comes back. So what happened is about 30 days after he touched the apple of God's eye, he touched Israel, 30 days later, he was struck down, struck down. And the thing is, the thing is, you know, the Bible says that, he says in Ezekiel, it says, I will bring the enemies of Israel upon the mountains. Well, one of them is Iran, and he's the first one of those nations that actually struck. Well, on that day, his helicopter came down. He was brought down on the mountains. Wow. This is so powerful, so, so powerful. So what's the answer? How do we overcome the dragon? Yeah, well, the last part of the book, is, there's so much more, of course, we're just touching on, but the last part of the book is that, because the dragon or the enemy is warring not just against Israel, but against the church and against every one of us who was born in God's image, which is all of us. He's been doing that since we were born. Well, there's a way to overcome. How do we recognize his strategy? That's what the last part of the book is. 
How do we overcome? Well, the Bible says we do overcome. It says they overcame him by the blood Amen. of the Lamb. The Lamb is also in the book of Revelation, and between the dragon and the Lamb, the Lamb wins. And the thing is that, so there's a whole key. The thing is we will win it, it be, as long as we fight the fight. We stand. Don't give up. Fight the fight. You are guaranteed victory. You know, it doesn't look like a lamb is going to beat a dragon, but he does. So it often doesn't look like you're going to win. You will win. You will prevail. If you, you follow the lamb with all your heart, fight the good fight, you will win. Rabbi, the dragon's prophecy. How do we get our hands on it? There we go. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like <laughs> this. It's literally all over right now. just came out yeah. from everywhere. From Amazon, you can get it right now, anywhere online. It's even in Walmart and everywhere you can get books. Uh, but I pray people get it, not just for yourself. Get it for people in your life who need to know what's happening and what's coming and how to be ready. Thank you so much, Rabbi. We so appreciate your time and what you're sharing. And I know probably already there's probably more revelation of the next book. That's, if it's not downloaded yet, it's coming. So we look forward to the next one. But thank you so much for stopping by here on Unscripted Faith. Thank you, guys. It was great. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been outstanding. When we come back, Angela and I are going to also share some things that God's been speaking to us about the current times we're living in. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. Welcome to Dashing Dish. Oliver is officially here and we are so in love. We're settling in as a busy family of four. And when it comes to making meals in this busy season of life, this mom turns to her favorite kind of meals, sheet pan meals. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like... Paul said in Philippians 2, God is working in you giving you the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. God will never ask you to do something and not give you the ability to do it. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith. Listen, if you're just tuning in, it has been outstanding. Rabbi Jonathan Conn has been in the house breaking down his latest book, The Dragon's Prophecy, all about the end times. You know, Angela, many times people are afraid, they're scared of the end times, yeah. and, you know, and all this stuff. For me, it's exciting. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I love it, but I understand it. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think that all of us can feel a little bit of fear with it because it's unknown, but that's why gifts like Jonathan Kahn's is so powerful because when we see the goodness of the Lord to write the future in the past yeah. and give us these clues along the way, like, baby, I done seen all this. I'm mm -hmm. sovereign. I know it's coming. I prepared and I've got you covered. I think that really gives us hope. One of the scriptures that I sit in in all of it is Romans 8 and 28. For we know that all things work together for good Amen. for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. And I think that as the church, as the bride, one of the greatest strategies we have is to dig deep, is to know that we must have enduring faith. It is not this tickle my ear, let's see, oh, hype me up. Mm -hmm. It must be real and we must be truly rooted in the rock that is Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, one of the things I think that's important to rec realize too is that the Bible says that the children of Israel knew God's works, yes. but they didn't know his ways. Come on. And when you said something, that's where he's, I think it's so cool. In the book of Daniel, it talks about how God told Daniel to shut up the prophecies until the end. I believe God chose Rabbi Jonathan Kahn yep. to unveil 
stuff that God showed Daniel yes. back in those days. And we see the pattern. We see the pattern, which, like you said, you, uh, uh, how'd you put it, yeah. baby? Uh, you didn't already <laughs> seen this thing. I don't know how you put it. I can't do it like Angela did it, but something along that line. But we know what he's up to. Yes. He wants us to know. That's why I think if people miss the rapture, yes. if they miss it, God is like revealing his hand. Yes. He's showing us what's yes. going to happen. Yes. We just need to study it, know it, and let it encourage us because yes. he wants us to know yes. what he's up to. Yeah, it is the goodness of the Lord. You know, Revelations, I think the bride has taken it and has been like, oh my gosh, uh, it's, it's the revelation of the dragon. It's the revelation of Christ Jesus, That's okay? Right. And that is where our rooting must be. He is victorious. It doesn't matter. Come famine, come war, come anything that may come. He is victorious. And as we walk in him, we gain that victory. You know, and so, so for me in this hour, even with this election, you know, yeah, even with right, these right, debates right, and all of that, right. I find myself continually going back to the father and saying, God, you hold every piece, whether it's Nebuchadnezzar, on right. the throne or it's David. It doesn't matter because you are the king of all kings. And, and for me, Jay, I really hope that in this hour, that's where the bride lands and doesn't find themselves as sons of thunder operating in the flesh yeah. and, and not recognizing it, you know? Hey, listen, now you brought up the elections. Yes. Are you gonna be watching the debates? Honey, I don't know. I might watch bits and pieces. It, it gets, <laughs> when I get there, I find myself in the flesh thinking, now how, how is this or, <laughs> but, but I will, I will take it to prayer. You know, That's I think, where I go. I think Rabbi said something really good though. He said, no matter who gets in, yes. it's going to accelerate something. Yes. Is there anything in your spirit that you're sensing that God is saying or doing in this season? Uh, I really do think that he is asking the bride to be strengthened. Yeah. I think that's the number one thing. That is the word the Lord has given me for over a year and I can't get away from it. And I feel like it is my personal duty anytime I get the opportunity to share his word that we must remain strong no matter what comes. Amen. It, you, you must know Christ himself. And that must be the only goal, the only objective to be Christ within me. You know, mm. how about you? You know, I really believe to what you're saying, we just need to be prepared. I think no matter who comes, who goes, who gets in office, we have a job to do. Yes. And Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back. Yes. He's getting ready to slap that long lean Galilean leg over that white stallion. The trumpet's about to blow. Yes. The dead in Christ are about to arise. And come then we on. who are alive and remain about to be caught up to yes. meet the Lord in the air. Listen, I hope that this show today has encouraged you and strengthen your faith. There's nothing to be afraid. He's revealing all of this because guess what? It's time for us to begin to look up. In Matthew 24, he said, when all these things happen, look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. We'll see you next time on Unscripted Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.